We are just gliding through the week, aren't we? I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and today is Tuesday. It is September 17th. Now, you know where I'm going, right? I'm going to share with you a hot penny stock that I found today as I was trading penny stocks. I do this every day. I trade stocks under five bucks. And you know where I find them? Anywhere I look. They're on every single market. And I'm always looking for a hot penny stock, one that has potential to make us some money. And when I go looking for a hot penny stock, I do not start with the filings and the press releases. That just takes too much time. And ultimately, I'm going to go look at the chart to see if I want to get in. So why not just start with the charts? I look for a chart that has heat. I'm not reading the charts. I'm looking for a bullish pattern. I'm looking for a cup and handle or a double bottom that looks like a W or maybe my favorite, an atypical breakout. Those all have strong probabilities of running. So when you find a chart that has heat, then take the time to rummage around through that company's filings and press releases looking for some hot information. You get some hot news to match your hot chart, you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you. And I've got one for you right now. This is Microvast Holdings, ticker MVST. We are looking at it because of the chart. It's perfect. It is a perfect atypical breakout chart, folks. This is my favorite breakout because this breaks out seven, eight out of 10 times. This has all the signals I am looking for. I like the chart. And we've got catalysts over here. So everything looks perfect for a run tomorrow. So Microvast Holdings, she finished the day today just a little over 31 cents and she was up a little over 11% gains. Now, this is a hot penny stock on the major exchange coming with those benefits I'm always talking about. No transaction fees up on the major exchange like the OTC. You get to trade pre-market aftermarket, which you never get to do on the OTC. There's a lot more volume and a lot more money up on the major exchange compared to the OTC. And there's also a lot more rules making it a lot safer on the major exchange compared to the OTC. So personally, I like trading stocks on the major exchange just because it's safer. So what is MVST all about? Let's dive into the website to find out. They tell us over here that Microvast produces innovative and reliable lithium ion batteries with advanced technologies with nearly two decades of experience in battery development. Think about that, 20 years of experience and we've only had the EV boom for what, five, six years now? So these people have a lot more experience than most of the companies on the market right now. We're accelerating the adoption of clean energy with the installation of more than 31,000 battery systems in over 34 countries. That's impressive. Microvast is vertically integrated with absolute control from the very start research and development process to the manufacturing of our battery packs and energy storage system, ESS, energy storage system. This includes the core battery chemistry as well. With established manufacturing worldwide, we can provide the right lithium ion battery solution to meet the needs of many different industries, including commercial electric vehicles, utility scale storage, and heavy equipment. They make big, strong batteries for the big market. We're not talking about batteries for your phone or for your computer, nothing like that. Now, this looked like a real good site to do your research on, but when I started diving around, no matter what page I went to, this big square bar came up with all these weird letters and there's nothing I can do here. I mean, I can actually scroll the page, but it's kind of tough to read it with that sitting there. And that comes up on every single page. So I'm not sure what to tell you here. Maybe it doesn't come up on your browser. I tried it on two browsers and I can't get rid of it. Let's take a look at some news now. I have gone back here to June of this year where they tell us they had made a deal with Envoy Forge. This is a partnership electrifying boats. So now they're getting their batteries into the marina sector as well. In July, the company celebrates four years of supplying high-performance battery systems to eVersum. We always like to see long-standing contracts on the books. That gives me a feeling that I can trust this company. Then we've got two pieces of news here. Microvast unveils the new next-generation LFP ESS 
which is the electric storage solution battery for your microgrids. So when you have no power from the city, you've always got power. You've been accumulating power and it's sitting there in your batteries. Well, they've also improved their EV batteries as well. Lots of new technology and that's what they're all excited about right now. They are launching these batteries right now. Last piece of news we will take a look at when we look at the financials. Microvast reports their second quarter financial results. So let's take a look at the relative volume for the company. It's way up there, jumping from about 2 million shares as a daily average over the last 30 days. Today we did about 7.5 million shares, more than tripling our normal volume. Share structure for MVST. And nothing to get excited about here. Par for the course. We got 323 million outstanding. I don't know how many the insiders own, so I can't subtract it from the outstanding to tell us what the float might be. So the best I can say is that our float is never higher than the outstanding share count. So it won't be more than 323 million, Whew. but it could be considerably less. Market cap for the company. We're currently at about 91 million. Take a look at those financials. Looking over the last four years and remembering to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. So basically we're looking at millions of dollars up here and it's been growing. Wow, look at this folks. Back in 2020, we were just over a hundred million dollars. They added 50 million by 2021, another 50 million by 2022, and then added a hundred million by 2023. So we're up here at 306 million and look at the profit margin. They have made big leaps and bounds in increasing their profit margin. But look, here we had 204 million and only made $9 million. For an extra 100 million, we have now gone up six times. So our margin of profit is increased greatly and that's making a huge difference right now. Looking over the quarterlies, up and down a little bit here, we got a rough average of between 80 and 85 million for most quarters, and the profit margin is growing. Here we got 27 million for $83 million worth of revenue. Back here we had 100 million and only had 23. So this is looking really good, folks. Balance sheet, remembering those three zeros over here too. Cash and cash equivalents, I like to call this the bank. We got about 103 million in the bank. Total assets, ooh, look at this folks, almost a billion dollars, please be less. It is, total liabilities, just over a half a billion. So we have total stockholder equity of $478 million in this penny stock, almost a half a billion dollars. So we've got strong stockholder equity, we have strong revenues, and we have stronger profit margins. Everything is looking good. Now let's dive into that piece of news about their financials. These are the results for the second quarter of 2024, and they give us some projections for Q3. Right off the bat, they tell us they had record revenues for Q2, increasing 11.6% year over year, jumping to 83.7 million. Their gross profit margin increased, you ready for this, from 15.3% to 32.5%. Folks, that is over a 100% increase. They doubled their profit margin. That is delish. Now, those are the good numbers. We got some bad numbers here too. Operating expenses were 103 million this year compared to 39 million last year. Net loss, 78 million this year compared to 26 million last year. And cash and cash equivalents, 104 million as we just saw, compared to 195 million last year. So we've had a lot of changes happen here in the last year. Some good, some bad. But overall, when I weigh it up, it all looks like it's going in the positive direction to me. Things don't look bad at all. So what do they tell us they expect to happen in Q3? For Q3 2024, the company is targeting a revenue growth of 6 to 12% year over year and revenue guidance of jumping to 85 to 90 million. And we just did 83. Targeting operational efficiencies, providing a company gross margin target of 25%. Ongoing R&D, of course. 
progressing towards new product developments, including, and this is what's most important here, launching the company's latest product, specifically the LFP battery, specifically tailored to our energy storage solutions. They are also shifting their long-term focus in the U.S. to the ESS market, and they are converting their Clarksville, Tennessee facility to handle that. They are also exploring strategic alternatives to enhance liquidity, including the sale of certain U.S. non-core real estate assets. I have no idea what they're referring to. You're going to have to jump into the most recent financial to figure that one out. They are also exploring new customer projects in the Americas, including Canada. So they're looking for more business. And the one other thing, I did dive into their most recent financial, and I found out that the company had, at the end of December last year, $276 million of backlog business. And they said it was going to take them the rest of 2024 and some of 2025 to catch that up. And you know, new business is coming in. So they're doing really well. They got lots of business so much they can't keep up with it right now. All right, let's go take a look now at the uh, disclosures for the company. I found this interesting over here. I went through all of these, reading them to see what we had. This 10Q is the most recent financial, came out August 9th for the period of June 30th this year. This ARS is also a financial. It looks to be the same one. I can't say they're exact. There may be differences, but they're pretty long, so I didn't go checking everything out. But I went through each one of these, and the one thing that I found very interesting is even when I went all the way back to April, I could not find a NASDAQ notification that they have been under a dollar for too long, and they have. When we look at the chart, you'll see on the four-hour, six-month chart, the high is 98 cents. So we know that for over six months, they have been under a dollar, and I see no notification. Why is that a problem? Well, on the major exchange, if you go under a dollar for too long, six months is normally way too long, you get a warning. We have to get that price up over a dollar, close over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. Then they're out of hot water. If we don't get that price up over a dollar for 10 days, there's only one of two options. One, go down to the OTC, or two, do a reverse stock split. We don't want either one of those. But the fact is, they haven't received the notification yet. And when they do, they're going to be given six months to get the price up over a dollar. So, as a day trader, this isn't going to affect us at all. We've got six months before we even have to worry about that. So, we got lots going on with the company. We have different batteries, better batteries. These have been upgraded, improved for storage solutions and for EV cars. So we've got all this coming onto the market right now, and they are targeting the industrial sector, not the consumers for the most part. They're going after the big money, and the big money is coming in. We don't have a float that's too exciting, but the revenues are growing, the profit margins are growing, and the most exciting thing, the chart is hot. It's got everything I'm looking for. Let me show you what I found. We're going to chart MVST now on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. We got MicroVast opened up to a six-month, four-hour view. Kinda. That was the chart I was looking at when I said she had not got over 98 cents over the last six months. That's not true. <laughs> I didn't have the whole chart opened up. Fact of the matter is, six months ago in December, she had a high of a buck fifty-five. But since then, she has been in a serious downtrend, hitting a low here September 12th of 17 cents. Now, it was here in April, we did have a breakout. Our 200-day MA went flat. She jumped from $0.35 cents up to $0.60, cents, dipped under the 200, struggled to try to stay up there, but couldn't do it, falling down to that low. Now, let us grab some supports and resistances, or I'm not going to be able to plan a trade. Our supports and resistances are where the price likes to change direction. So, I'm going to get some lines up here right now. Let's see what we've got going. And we need a couple low ones, too, because she could fall back, right? But we like those high ones. We're counting on her climbing. At least I am. And we need one more in there, about right there. All right, let's take a look now at what we've got going on currently. We have a downtrend. She is underneath the 200, hit this low, and as you can see, volume is growing very, very strong right now, getting stronger and stronger. 
She pushed off of that low, jumping onto her nine day, crossing every single MA as she crossed the 200. Pulled back to this strong support and is at 31 cents right now, sitting on top of it, just up underneath that 200 MA. All of our MAs are turned up right now, including our 200 haul, my favorite. Now, what's most interesting here, folks, is this price took off before the 200 haul turned up. I normally wait for that. So this looks anxious. This looks like it wants to run. So I'm going to watch this close. Our oscillators say there is a lot of power here, folks. Every single one of them is charging to the moon right now. Our RSI is in the overbought up there at 73. This is a very hot chart. Come on down to our 20-day, one-hour view. So we're under the 200. We hit that low. We have bounced up, crossed to that 200, got on top of that support, crushed the second support, hit a high here of 36.76, pulled back and right now we are sitting on a strong support at 30 31 cents. All of our MAs are crossing the 200 now. Anytime a smaller MA crosses a bigger one, it's called a golden cross. You can expect more power in the rise in the price. Osculators. PPO, percentage price oscillator is still climbing. MACD is cooling off a little bit. She's actually rolling down now and our RSI is going sideways. Take a look at our five day 15 minute. Whoa, now that looks good, right? We've had a change of trend. 200 day was falling. She went flat right in this zone. And where did she break out folks? Right where she was going flat. Boom, just cut right through it. Didn't even bounce on the 200. Just went through it. She's bouncing on her 50 all the way uphill right now. This is looking very slow. <laughs> I was going to say sleek and fluid. I came out with sluid. <laughs> Osculators, they were falling, but every single one of them is now trying to push up. Every single one of them. I am liking the recovery on this. Let's take a look at our five day, five minute. Strong folks. She pushed off of that 200, got on her 50, has had some big jumps today, pulled back, but is sitting on a very strong support here at that 31 cents. Oscillators say she wants to climb. I think this is going to climb tomorrow. I don't know if it's going to be pre-market or during the day, but I am going to be watching this. They are making strong revenues. They have got new batteries coming out. They've increased their profit margin by 100%. So things are really good for this company, and I think we can cash in on it tomorrow. Do some more due diligence. Hopefully you can get through that website without that big white thing in the middle of it. I couldn't find any more information around there. Hopefully you'll have better luck than I did. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.